bell peppers stuffed with meat with mushrooms and spinach so we are going to start by preheating our oven to 190 degrees celsius then we are going to prep our bell peppers and you can use any color you fancy red yellow or green you can even use all three of them like i'm doing now there are two ways to make these bell peppers one is when the pepper stands upright on its own you can chop off the top and it's like a bucket almost the other one is when the bell pepper is uneven and it tends to fall down you can slice it through the middle and make it like a boat so for the upright pepper you just want to run your knife around the top like so and then just pop the top open and remove all the seeds and noodly bits of it and then your pepper is ready to use the second way that I mentioned where you cut it vertically so it's more like a boat is the way I prefer it so just cut down the middle and remove all the seeds and the noodly bits and it's pretty much ready to use so which way are you going to do it let me know in the comments below boat or bucket I'm gonna go with the boat anyway once these are prepped and ready I'm going to put them in a roasting tray or you can even use an oven proof dish no problem and you want to have them open side facing up then just drizzle some avocado oil or some olive oil over it you can even brush them with butter if you like then season it generously with salt and pepper we're going to now roast these and we do want to make sure that they are seasoned well so once you have done that pop them in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes till they start getting a bit tender and getting a little bit roasted now if you don't have an oven you can do this on the stove as well just place your oiled and seasoned bell peppers in a dry frying pan and cover it and cook it on a low heat for about 8 to 10 minutes after 8 minutes your pan cooked bell peppers will be ready and make sure you turn them over so that any liquid that has collected inside is poured out then of course remove them and set them aside and after about 15 minutes your oven roasted peppers will be ready as well and what you want to do is turn them over so that any water collected inside is drained out and now set these aside while we make the stuffing for them so the first thing I will do is prep my mushrooms I'm using plain old white mushrooms what I'm going to do is separate the mushroom stalk from the cap and remember we use all of it we waste nothing so you just want to cut down the stalk in the middle and then slice it so you get nice small pieces and for the mushroom cap you want to slice it down the length and then across basically you want a diced mushroom so do that to all your mushrooms now I'm also going to take a couple of olives I've got some seedless olives and I'm going to just slice them up and as always you can use green olives or black olives olives with seeds or without seeds it's completely up to you and if you don't like olives just skip them or check the blog post for substitutes I'm also going to chop up some fresh parsley and as always if you can't get fresh use dried no problem anyway once that's done it's time to get cooking so I'm going to get my pan on the stove and heat up a nice big knob of butter about 30 grams should be fine once that butter has melted in goes my ground meat and I'm using a mix of chicken and pork equal quantities now I'm just going to give it all a good mix and you want to ensure that you are constantly stirring and breaking up the meat so that no lumps are formed the idea here is to completely cook out all the liquid from the meat and the vegetables that we add later and as always you can make this recipe with any ground meat you like now I'm going to season the meat with some everything bagel seasoning which is fast becoming one of my favorite seasonings to use of course you can use any kind of seasoning you like it's completely up to you I just think this works great also since this has salt I'm not going to add any additional salt to this right now I'm also going to add in some chili flakes for a bit of heat and some paprika which I think is my favorite spice of all time 
Anyway, I'm going to give it all a good mix and continue cooking the ground meat. Once that's been cooking for a minute or so, the next item that goes in is the mushrooms. And I'm going to give it all a good mix. Now remember, mushrooms also release a lot of water and we want to cook out all the moisture from it. And at this point, I'm also going to add in my spinach to the pan. And as always with spinach, it may look like a lot, but it will wilt down and be less than 25% in volume. So don't worry about it. Just cover it with a lid and cook it for 2 to 3 minutes till the spinach wilts. Once that's done, I'm going to give everything a good mix and make sure all those flavors are getting to know each other. So, give it all a good mix. Next, I'm going to add in some shredded cheese. As always, use your favorite cheese. It could be cheddar, it could be gouda, it could be parmesan. It's up to you. I'm also going to add in some heavy whipping cream. I also had some sour cream in my fridge that needed to be used up so that went in as well. Then I'm going to throw in those sliced olives and also the chopped parsley. And then I'm going to give it all a good mix. In fact, I'm going to give it the best mix I can. You want to make sure that everything is well mixed. Now you just want to cook it with the lid off till all the liquid in the pan almost dries up. You don't want there to be too much liquid, so just cook it and once most of the liquid has gone, the stuffing for our bell peppers is ready. Now it's time to stuff the bell peppers with the meat stuffing, so flip them over in your baking tray and then proceed to stuff them. Make sure you are generous with the stuffing and you want to pack in as much as you can into the bell peppers. Once those are stuffed, you want to top it with some mozzarella cheese because we're making cheesy stuffed bell peppers after all. And I'm also going to throw on some of that fresh parsley on top. And then these go into the oven for about 10 minutes and we're going to up the temperature to 200 degrees Celsius now. Once again, in the event that you don't have an oven, stuff your bell peppers, top them with some cheese and some parsley and then put them in the same frying pan in which you made the meat and cover it and cook it with a lid for about 5 to 7 minutes. You want to open up the lid midway and throw in some water which will help create a sort of steam in the pan which will melt the cheese and cook the peppers till they are done. So anyway, cover it and let it cook and after about 7 minutes, mine were done and they look pretty awesome. The cheese has melted and the peppers are perfectly cooked. So just remove them from the pan and set them aside. These are now ready to eat. And after about 10 minutes of cooking, my oven roasted ones are ready too. And they look spectacular. Look at that golden brown color on the cheese. That's the disadvantage of not having an oven. You won't get that color without it. Anyway folks, that's pretty much it. Our stuffed bell peppers are ready and they look absolutely delicious. Anyway, I can't let you go without cutting into one. Don't you hate it when people don't cut into the food? Anyway, look at that. It's top notch. So that's your lunch folks. Enjoy. Keto stuffed bell peppers. For this recipe, I'm going to be using ground beef. But you can make it with chicken, turkey, lamb or even pork. Now look at the white bits in my ground beef, that's all beef fat which adds flavor. However, you want to try and get ground beef with 10 to 15% fat, anything more and it gets too greasy. I'm going to slice up my onion for the stuffing and I'm using a small red onion which is about 70 grams and look at how I'm slicing the onion. This apparently makes you cry less when you cut it. And also it's going to add more texture to the stuffing. So cut it like this. I am also going to roughly chop up some fresh coriander which we'll use right at the end for our stuffing. And finally I will preheat my oven to 200 degrees celsius before I get cooking. For this recipe I am going to use one green, one yellow and one red bell pepper. However you can use any color you like but remember the green ones have the least amount of carbs in them. Now many people will stand the pepper up and chop off the top and stuff the pepper. But I find that it's not a very smart thing to do since the peppers often don't stand upright properly. 
which is why I choose to cut it right down the middle and make it like a boat. You can also get a lot more surface area to cover with cheese when you bake it and who doesn't want more cheese right? So slice it down the middle and then take out the seeds and anything else you find inside the bell pepper. I'm leaving the stalk on because it looks cool and it holds the whole thing together. Anyway do this to all your peppers, first the green, then the yellow and then the red and you should have your peppers prepped and ready to rock and load. Now I will get my baking tray, I will place the peppers in, skin side up and unfortunately my baking tray couldn't fit all of them so I had to leave one half of a pepper out. Then I spray them with some pan spray and I season it with salt. You could also brush on some olive oil if you don't have pan spray and then these go into my preheated oven for 10 minutes to cook. Time to make our stuffing and I'm gonna get my pan on the stove and heat up about a tablespoon of ghee. Then into the ghee goes my onions and now it's time to saute those onions. We're looking to caramelize these onions and really bring out their flavor and to do that I will season them with a bit of salt. I also like to season this dish along the way to build layers and layers of flavor. Patiently saute those onions and once they start getting nice and brown around the edges, it's time to add in our beef and keep that heat up on a medium to high heat and saute that beef as well. Now it's going to release some water and that fat is going to render out and melt and then when the water dries up, the beef will fry with those onions in its own fat and the ghee of course. Once most of the beef juices have dried up, we are going to add in our ginger and garlic paste, season very generously with salt and now we add in all our spices. We got some turmeric, red chilli powder, cumin powder, coriander powder and garam masala and then give it all a good mix. Now we want to cook out the rawness of the spices and the ginger and garlic so keep stirring it and sautéing it and you will see your beef get a beautiful, deep, rich color from all the spices. Honestly, you can eat this as it is but I'm going to take this to the next level by adding in some canned tomatoes. And I'm also going to add in some water. Remember, beef and tomatoes are a great combination. I'm going to give everything a good mix and then cover it with the lid and cook it for 10 minutes on a medium heat. Meanwhile, my bell peppers have finished their first round of cooking and I've taken them out of the oven. I'm just gonna flip them over and then they can grab a drink, sit back, relax and cool down till they're ready to be stuffed. After 10 minutes, I open up the lid on my beef and you can see that most of the liquid has dried out and we have a nice dry but still saucy mixture. Into that, I'm going to add 50 grams of cream cheese and give everything a good mix. You can also use sour cream if you like, heavy cream is also okay. If you want to be dairy free, coconut cream will also do. Completely your choice. And now just look at how creamy and delicious and unctuous that stuffing looks. Now I turn off the heat and I finish it with some fresh coriander and of course you gotta give it one final good mix. Now you could totally eat this with a spoon right now, but I urge you to hang on. Anyway, that's our beef stuffing for the bell peppers done and ready. And it looks so good. Let me just jibber jabber for a bit so you can see some serious food porn. Anyway, time to stuff those bell peppers. Now I get a spoon and I stuff those peppers with the beef mixture and make sure you pack each pepper with a whole lot of meat. Emphasis on the word stuffed in the name stuffed bell peppers. Once you've stuffed the bell peppers, well then it's time to add on some cheese and I'm just using some shredded mixed cheese. Once again, you can use any cheese you like or if you are dairy free, then just no cheese. Time to pop these back into the oven at the highest temperature possible till all the cheese melts and turns golden brown. This takes about 10 minutes. After what seemed like a very long 10 minutes, mostly because I was hungry, the bell peppers are done and ready. And just look at that cheese on the top, how nice and golden and crispy it's gotten. Yummy! And that's it folks, our keto stuffed bell peppers are done and ready. One yellow, one green and one red. 
stuffed with a glorious meat sauce made from water buffalo beef. But before we taste it, you know I can't let you go without cutting into one of those peppers and showing you a cross section. So I get out my knife and fork and I cut right through that pepper. And oh yeah, just look at that juicy cross section.